I didn't know I wanted to get into comedy. I didn't want to, I didn't pursue it, you know? And, and when I did it, and I did it on an amateur night at Yuck Yucks in Toronto, and, uh, you know, I got up on stage because I thought it would be funny. My friend dared me to get up on stage. And the point was that I wasn't a comedian and therein lies the joke that I wasn't a comedian. And then when I first realized that they uh, were looking at me and waiting for something, I got uncomfortable and that fear is what I shared. And if you look at my old YouTube videos, that discomfort is what they were laughing at because I started going, okay, 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 okay. And I didn't have anything. And then they started laughing at me saying, okay, okay. And I would go, what, what, what? And I really didn't know what. And then when I had nothing, I reached into my pocket and grabbed one of my rubber gloves that I carry because I'm a germaphobe and I pulled it over my head and I was breathing and the fingers were going up and the audience was laughing and then and boom, I had an act. And Mark Breslin came up to me and said, will you come back tomorrow? And I said, oh, okay. I had every day job that anybody could ever have, you know, from my uh, paper route of, I had a big paper route, but it was really hard to collect. I had over 200 papers and, and growing up in Toronto in the winters, I got them in three big uh, apartment buildings. So I didn't have to go outside. Collecting was tough. And then I worked at Shoppers Drug Mart. I broke uh, boxes in the basement of Shoppers Drug Mart. And then I was, I worked at, uh, for Conklin, I worked for the CNE, the Canadian National Exhibition in Toronto in the summer. That didn't last long because that was the first time I was given a microphone and I would, I operated a ride called the Vegas Chase. And I'd go, you wanna go faster? And they'd go, yeah. And I go, you wanna go faster? And they'd all scream, yeah. And I'd go, make sure the orange shoulder harness over your left shoulder was done up securely. I'm going upside down in five seconds. But there was no orange shoulder harness. It didn't go upside down, but the people didn't know it. And I was entertained by people going, wait. And I'd go, five, four, three, no, nah, no. Nah. But I, I, I got fired, but, you know, that was me entertaining myself in the minute. When I told that story on stage, it became part of my act when I talked about. So I realized that I could use my real, uh, you know, uh, whatever happened to me in my life as fodder for what eventually became a career. I have the same advice, you know, that Nike has, and that's just do it. Just do it and just own it. If you think it's funny or you're doing something, you know, I think you just got to sell it. I don't think I've gone two or three days without being on stage and I'm in my sixties now. And whether I'm playing a big concert in a, in the theater or an arena or a casino or a corporate date, wherever I am, I find a stage, you know, in, in some comedy club at two in the morning, I'll say, is it still open? I just love my time on stage. And the more time you could spend, it's all about, numbers well now you know when i started out things were different and things were you know i i listen i started at yuck yucks and i wouldn't be here today if i didn't get that start at yuck yucks at the time you had to come to new york and la if you wanted to have any international success i think now you don't have to I think that now with the advent of digital, you know, streaming and YouTube and whatever, I mean, you may not even have to go to a club to become famous. You could sit in your room alone in your underpants and if you do something brilliant, the world is going to know and give you a brand deal and, you know, make you a star. So it's a very different world today. So you can stay in Canada, you could stay in your house, you could stay in your room, you could stay in your underpants. It's very different today. So if I was starting out today, I probably would still be talking to you from Toronto. I think there is not an opportunity that should, you know, show itself in front of you that you should ever say no to. If you say no, you are just shutting the door to an opportunity. I don't think you can plan how to make it. I don't think you can plan a career. As luck would have it, when I was out in California on other business, I went to the comedy store to do what I did at Yuck Yucks. And I got seen and got offered a TV show. And when that TV show aired, it was making me laugh. I was back in Toronto still doing re retail. I got called back out to do some talk shows. And those talk shows aired when I went back and I got offered to be Diana Ross's opening act. And it, I have just fallen into everything. And which has become a, you know, my credo. There's enough people that are gonna say no to you. You should never say no to yourself.
And even if something sounds hard and something sounds uncomfortable and something sounds bad and you think of all the different things, don't say no if they don't say no. So if somebody approaches you, there's a reason to do it.